I know, this is old Cam. And this is not a screenshot <laughs> yeah. today we're talking about. Uh, about the death of journalism in our country. She was actually oh, present that the day journalism changed for the worst. I know, which is the first day. Well, actually, that's the it most recent the, day. It was the day that Michael Jackson died, and they went totally mm -hmm. looted. Yeah. About it. I mean, it became an entertainment venue instead of a news venue. I mean, you have to look no further than how the President of the United States is mentioned. He's a rock star. I mean, this could be the first President of the United States that could win an Academy Award as Best Actor and win a Grammy Award for Best Singer also in the same. Oh, yeah. do, you have, do you think it have, has anything to do with many of the... Uh but news divisions are actually part of entertainment or something. Oh, no, it, it all started back. Here's the thing was, in, in Rune Arleigh basically was the, the architect of, he was the head of, of, um, of the sports division over at, at, at ABC, and they needed, a, they needed somebody to cover the news. And they basically just appointed him to be the head of both temporarily, and what happened was, he was doing Wide World of Sports. Tony Savalas was, a, I think he was the producer of Wide World of Sports mm -hmm. at that time. They got the Olympic Games, the Nightmare in Berlin. And they discovered something very important. Those people were all news people. All of those sports reporters were new. I mean, they won Peabody Awards. They won Emmys. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. one, that thing. And then they decided, well, it, it meshes the news division and the sports division messages because they were all reporters. But what happened is, is, is that they have been drifting more away from hard news for years. So, I mean, I can go back to a thing with um, Ted Koppel when he said it's no longer our job to report the news. It's just to give you the story and let you decide what the truth is and what is not the truth. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, the the day. I mean, this is the most ridiculous thing today. Uh, they, they reported a story on Mitt Romney, which they admit had no truth in it whatsoever, and the President of the United States is using it. And the material was supplied by the White House for this story. And, um, and, and they, you know, their response was, well, whether it's true or not simply depends upon which political party you are and which presidential candidate you are. Mm -hmm. That's not how it's done in the news business. The, the truth is the truth is the truth. I mean, it's just Pravda means truth, for Christ's sake. You know, I mean, but um, that this election is going to be the determining factor. Of, are the news people basically quit being news people and nothing more than talking heads, which they've been going for years for entertainment purposes, or do they return to being newsmen? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I know that a lot of the hardline news people are pissed off at this president. Well, do you remember a few years ago when we were, maybe it's about five years ago, we were at the Consumer Electronics Show, or was it NAB? Um, and we were looking at a panel with the head of Associated Press. It would have been the NAB. And in, during the panel, he said, that his daughter asked him. She says, Dad. Oh, I remember that, yeah. Remember? That Dan Rather was there. Yeah, Dad, um, I want to do journalism as a career, but I have this opportunity in Los Angeles to work in the entertainment field. Do you think I should work there in my internship, or if I try, should try to do something like, what was it, like the Associated Press? Yeah. Or something more of a traditional media outlet? And what did he say? Yeah, he said, he said it's all the same. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's all the same. And I think he did tell her, do the entertainment because you'd have more opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, um, it, it's, it's, and then the people out there, well, they have, they had, we're members of the radio, television, old news director associates, now it's digital news, but um, you uh, see all the younger people who basically, I mean, you got guys with hair down to their shoulders, people with tattoos on, women that basically are, okay, this would be appropriate for a lot of what the girls were wearing at the NAB. I mean, they were wearing micro mini skirts with lots of rear ends showing, never had worn heels in their life, and had no clue of how you do resumes to get a job, because they're all, they're from a new I mean, I actually had the opportunity to see him doing uh, an experiment where the, on one on one channel, 
the people would show up in their t-shirts and shorts and the girls would be dressed in, you know, in one-piece swimsuits and they'd just be laying around on, you know, about, instead of sitting behind a desk, their feet up on cushions and stuff, doing um, the news. And the lines are also blurring because part of it is not only do we work with our own channels, we work with other channels. And news by nature is almost, it's like almost instantaneously, yeah. right, where it counts as news. Anything um, info key. Uh, it's why we see uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, because mm -hmm. it's news today, tomorrow is history, and tomorrow is yesterday. I know for some organizations, the deadline to be counted as news is within 72 hours, or you submit an article within 72 hours after it happens. Yeah. Which still, 72 hours is a pretty generous window. It, it's not really news. You know, news, you know what is, I mean? news is only news. <laughs> during the time it happened. After that, you're reporting about historical events. And a lot of times when something just happened, um, for example, when we've been at the Consumer Electronics Show where they have basically pre-written an article, yeah. they fill in a couple quotes, press the button, right? Yeah, right? And that's how they can get that story within minutes after like the press conference ending. Well, we'll tell you that we've been offered jobs submitting news for organizations that have a template. I, I, won't, I won't tell you who, but they told me, yeah, it was it two days ago, resubmit it on this template. Mm -hmm. Resubmit it on a template. And, and, and also, I have a friend that works with um, one of the major news organization companies. And they have been told that this stuff has been rejected because there's not enough hyperlinks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I know, isn't that unbelievable? You have to go <clears throat> back. Well, Every so many words, you must put a hyperlink into the thing so that it can be, it can be, yeah, okay. We have, um, we have what is known as a battle between old media and new media, and old media is basically fighting it to the end. Rupert Murdoch this week announced that old media is dead, totally dead. He is, the, he is basically splitting his company off from old, old media. media and new media. The new media is basically uh, the cable, the online, the entertainment division. Old media is all the publications. Publications are dead in our nation. I mean, I, you know, okay, we're going to say, going to give you an example. See, this is our own piece of paper with writing on it. If this was a newspaper, they threaten you. Mm -hmm. If you come on and say, you know, well, we, you know, we'd like for you people to actually go read the newspaper in your area. Well, they it, threaten you. Some of the biggest challenges we've seen in the news media is where, I mean, I still remember, um, gosh, CBS. Yeah. Well, Leslie Moonves. Leslie Moonves coming out at CBS, I don't know, five, <laughs> this is all like five, six years ago. There's no such thing as old media and new media. We're all media. Yeah. But part of it is we've seen the differences with, when blogging first started, Yeah. where bloggers were like, you might as well have leprosy. Yeah, and well, <laughs> we might as well have it again because they do not like blogging. And, and they go where blogging's really big and blogging's not big. And blogging's big in some areas or some fields or specialties and not big in other areas. Yeah, they don't seem to understand that almost all of the major websites in the country are blogs. Yeah, because they'll have news and then each of the individual, even Anchorman, will have their <coughs> blogs. That's right? right. It's all got to do is doing what you're doing Facebook, is doing Twitter, is doing Tumblr, is doing, we're doing Pinterest now for Christ's sake. We haven't, we haven't really done the Tumblr yet, but um, the problem that comes with this election is that, that, um, that there, okay, it used to be news editors and publications would take sides. Reporters basically tended to be neutral. Today, you have the reporters out actually actively campaigning for the political candidates. You have them doing commercials. Well, see, for part people. of it is they shouldn't be, for political candidates, they shouldn't because they're not supposed to take any sides. Now, it's a lack of journalistic integrity. I mean, this is. The, okay, uh, you, you go to a, a famous reporter that basically manufactured a story to try to get George Bush. It was so egregious that they fired the guy because he, you know, he, it, it, it happens. I mean, you've got right now, like I said, a story about Mitt Romney that they're saying, well, what's the big deal? You know, it's not, you know, it's, it, everybody knows it's not the truth. Well, but you need to go put it out there on the front page that there's nothing in it that's factual. They don't. The, mm -hmm. they, um, they, they've taken sides, the left has taken sides, the right has taken sides, and for Christ's sake, 85% of the press is to the left. 
And yeah, that is true. And, they they're, and, and, the, and the people on the left want to shut down journalism of any type. The, here's the trickiest part with any type? Of any type. They want mm -hmm. to, okay, the President of the United States wants to put in a system of which old media controls, I mean, the networks control the output of all well, information. They have been talking about doing that. And they basically... Uh, the, and the, why would you want the three major networks to control information? Because the three major networks are best qualified for handling the job according to the President of the United States. Mm -hmm. And they're, then who, who's in charge of the old, uh, those three networks? Mm -hmm. There's nobody on the conservative side. Mm -hmm. Which means you will only have news from one point of view. This is what this election has more than just Obamacare up or control of the House and the Senate. It has the future of journalism up. And some journalists are basically all of a sudden, okay, journalists don't like to be, they don't like to be called down when they're doing an interview and then come back and find out that they were right and the person that was belittling them on the air was wrong. Oh, yeah. Oh, they yeah, really yeah, get yeah. unhappy and they just simply pound on it because it, just those people will not forget what we've done and they're basically asking to doing okay yeah because the media had decided that they needed an afro-american president they dumped the best candidate which was hillary clinton mm -hmm. and now they're stuck they're, they're now all of a sudden discovering these things that he should have been vetted he was he was the first president in our nation's well, history that was never vetted you know sometimes because and, and people do this too in just regular situations it's so so many times you want to believe one thing that you don't open your eyes to what else is going around yeah but, and, or you don't do your proper job but at the moment they said that the press is becoming more and more a willing conspirator in the election of a president of the united states and this is the same as on the right i mean okay barack obama has done nothing wrong to the people on the left and he's done nothing right to the people on the right and it's not the way it works because Obama has done some things right he's done considerably more wrong than he's done right but the, the you know you only hear very seldom well you know this thing is really a good idea mm -hmm. very seldom and presidents are more okay this is the president that doesn't actually govern he lets the Senate do all his heavy lifting for him, and then if he has problems, he does. He he doesn't even executive order. He gives suggestions because, as as a suggestion, he cannot be held responsible. He did not give an executive order on the immigration thing. He sent a thing suggesting that this is what they do, and if it's implemented. He's not the one for responsible for violation, violating acts of law. The the uh, Janet Napolitano is. Oh, those are those gray areas. That's gray areas, but they're not okay. You know how you find out that he didn't. <laughs>